man. Hey, good morning, everybody. Why don't we all uh, get ready to worship, huh? So I was uh, talking to God about you guys today, and he wanted me to tell you that he's really proud of you and that uh, you are so loved. And... Uh, He's glad that you are his child. Yeah. So before we start, why don't we, uh, why don't we just say, just uh, repeat this prayer after me? Holy Spirit, I give you permission to surprise me today. I give you permission to interrupt me today, and I give you permission. To offend me today. Amen. You guys are in trouble now. <laughs> hey, uh, I, really want, I just want to invite you guys to come up to the front if you really, um, it's just fun, you know, it makes it fun. And uh, I think there's something that happens when you get out of your comfort zone and uh, just, you know, give your all to Jesus. And so no pressure, but I will be um, taking notes. And then I'm going to report back to Josh. No. <laughs> no, but seriously, if you want to come up front, I really invite you to come and just, just enjoy this time that we have worshiping, um, worshiping God today. So let's do it. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never. Worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again.
still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever
invited you up front earlier. I see four or five. Come on, guys, you gotta put the pastors to shame here. So, God, I uh, gave you permission to make me uncomfortable, to uh, surprise me, you know, interrupt me, do all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, if you want it, come and get it. We're gonna dance in the river, yeah. We're gonna dance in the river, yeah. We're gonna dance in the river, yeah. We're gonna dance. We're gonna dance in the river, yeah. The river's up front here. We're gonna dance in the river, yeah. We're gonna dance in the river, yeah. We're gonna dance. I probably offended you. Okay. We're gonna dance in the river. guys, no shame on you. No shame. Shame off of you. Okay? Shame off of you. He's proud of you. He's smiling over you. And here we see that God, you're moving. The time of jubilee is coming. When young and old return to
Amen. What about that? That's crazy. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's our joy to thank you. It's our joy to thank you. strong 
not just made to follow rules. We're not just made to make stuff, <laughs> but that we're made to, for a romance, that we're made for love. Thank you, God. Mm. We say yes, God. Provide the fire, and I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit, and I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill.
for more of you, Lord. I'm so hungry for more of you, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Oh, I just want more of you. Yes, I just want more of you. I just want more of you, Lord. So I just want more of you. Tell me, God. 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 over you because I love you because I want you I'm pouring it out I'm pouring it out you provide the fire and I'll provide the sacrifice You provide the spirit, and I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill. this morning. Press in. Press in. Just offer it up to him. Just, just a sacrifice of praise. Let him know how much you love him. Let him know how worthy Where we are, Father, I, I, we want to we live 
that extravagant life that you have for us. We want to do things out of the ordinary because we just want to be with you. We want to be near you. We want to see your hand moving. So God, we're going to press in to be filled. Not to, not to cap it, but God, so that we can be overflowing. Your river would burst forth. something we're just carrying, but the love of God is being unleashed through us. I just see a picture of, of the love of God as a raging river, and, and as you go to work, it's the love of God. As you go to the store, it's the love of God. As you go to your family, it's the love of God. As you go to your, your, your kids' activities, it's the love of God. There is nothing that nowhere you can go, nothing you can do, nowhere you can be around that the love of God just not is just flowing forth for you. It's the love of God. It goes through anything and everything. There's nothing that can stand in its way. There's no, there's no sickness. There's no report. There's no information you receive that the love of God cannot. It's the love of God. It's the cross. It's Calvary. It's the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray that your love that we are experiencing the past.
past that, that, that we're experiencing in this moment in time, Father, would not stop here, but God, it would it would affect every every area of our life. Every encounter, every phone call, every text, every relationship, every scenario we find ourselves in. God, we do not respond out of the out of the human mindset or understanding or desire, but God, we respond out of the love of God. Because you first loved me. I first experienced your love. Therefore, it changes everything. It transforms everything. It shakes everything. Father, we're so grateful. We're so thankful for your love. The love that transforms us. Spirit, soul, and body. It transforms us. It changes us. Never to be the same again. Father, however we came in this place today, we are going to leave different. We're going to leave renewed, transformed. Fresh eyes, fresh ears, fresh lips, fresh perspectives, fresh declaration. We declare and decree your love in this place this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and everybody said, if you're grateful and thankful for the love of God, will you put your together and give them a shout out. Why don't we stand together one more time? Stand together one more time. And uh, first of all, if you're here for the very first time, you've never been with us on a Sunday, will you shoot your hand up in the air? Anybody at all? We just want to say hi. Church, can we put our hands together for them this morning? Awesome. Welcome. We are so excited for you to join us. There is a card in the seat back in front of you if you wouldn't mind filling that out and placing it in the offering at the end of the service. And uh, before we uh, before we move on, kids, why don't you come on up here? Take 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Say hi to somebody around you. If you saw somebody raise their hand, go out of your way. Give them a hug. Say hi to them. Make them feel welcome. Hallelujah. I know we got more kids than that out here. Girls in the front row, let's go. I see you trying to hide and move away. It's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Awesome, awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Good to see you. <laughs> it is going to be an incredible class today, kids. We're talking on Job and there's prizes and sweets, I believe, and all sorts of things. They're, they're fired up for this class today. Awesome. Hey, will you stretch your hands this way so we can pray for these kids? Father, we thank you for the, the treasures that are up here. The kids, the, the callings, the destinies, the purposes that have been placed on, on their life. Father, I pray that as they dive into Job today, God, you would speak to them. You would challenge them. You would transform them, never to be the same again. Father, we pray for every teacher that you would put the fire of God on their lips, that they would communicate your word in spirit and in truth. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Put our hands together for our, our teachers and kids. Bye, guys. No way. Okay. We'll, we'll get there. Awesome. Hey, before we move on, I just want to invite you uh, next week into Mother's Day. We've got a very special Mother's Day plan. The kids. Uh, have a very special Mother's Day plan. We got puppets and prizes and all sorts of things that's going to happen. Our very own Pastor Bernice is going to be sharing next week, so you do not want to miss that. Yeah, get a get a little bit more excited for that. It doesn't happen nearly enough. There we go. So uh, invite all your friends, your families, your aunts and your uncles, grandma, grandpas, neighbors, nieces and nephews, sons and daughters. It's going to be a life changing day. Everybody. Everybody. Co-workers, tellers at the store. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to go back into worship here in, in a few minutes. But I just want to share very briefly with you on living uh, the extravagant life. And so if you would turn with me to Mark chapter 2 real fast. Um, extravagant is defined as exceeding the limits of reason. Exceeding the limits of of reason. Repeat that after me. Exceeding the limits of reason. Now, the reason we don't see more revival or more 
outbreaks of the supernatural, things of that nature, is because we allow reason to keep us from pressing into the things of God. We uh, hear the report of the doctor, we uh, listen to the news, we see what's going on in social media, we hear our friends and our families, and, and as a result of what we're hearing around us, we often think there's no ways on planet earth that that could happen. And so our prayers are more about God, your, you know, if it's your will, let them manage it, you know, as opposed to saying, no, God, we are believing for healings. We're believing for supernatural breakthroughs. We're believing for, for the miraculous to take place because you say in your word, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the doors will be open. Like we see all these scriptures in the Bible. And, and, and the beautiful thing about, about this book, and, and unlike any other book, is we don't have uh, the Bible version 13.5. You know, you see these books that have been written and, and it's the updated version. Right, like think of any book you've ever read. There's, there's, you know, I've I've read books and and when I was especially when I was taking my master's degree, they would say things like, when you order the book on, on self care, make sure you order self care 3.0. That's the most up to date version. Like like books and and philosophy and understanding and things are changing around us all the time. The Bible never changes. The Bible is was and will always be, which means if Jesus says, pray, lay hands on the sick and they will recover, it will happen. There's no, there's no questions. There's no wonderings. There's no, I'm going to need to adjust my prayer to make it happen. It is just declaring the very simple word of God that we've been given that's been around for generations to come. And so, and so when we, when we press into the things of God, when we would desire a move of the spirit, we have to set aside any human reason that may cause us to stumble. And so Mark chapter 2, I want to read this very quickly. I want to go back into worship because I believe there's a little bit more pressing in that we need to do this morning. Amen. There's a little bit of a, a removing of the natural eyes and replacing with the supernatural eyes in order to receive a touch from God. So we all know the story. Uh, several days later, Jesus returned to Capernaum, and the news quickly spread that he was back in town. Soon, there were so many people crowded inside the house to hear him that there was no more room. Even outside the door, there was no room to hear him, meaning the lines were so long, you couldn't hear him even though you were outside around a window or whatever. Like, this is what hungry people look like. This is what thirsty people look like. Like, they're going to come and do whatever they can to receive a word, a touch, a, a thought, a whatever it might be from the Holy Spirit. This is what we're seeing right here. While Jesus was preaching the word of God, verse 3, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man. But when they realized, say realized, that they couldn't even get near him because of the crowd, stop right there. Men, friends, cousins, relatives, all we know that there were four men. They had to be pretty close to him to do this journey with this paralyzed man. They, they picked him up in the natural, but in their mind, they, they understood who Jesus was. And they had this idea that if they went to Jesus with this impossible circumstance, his friend would be healed. His friend would be set free. And so they don't, they don't know. We don't know necessarily how far they came. I mean, they were traveling maybe minutes, miles, hours, days. But they came with this impossible circumstance. Saying, Jesus, if anybody can heal, if anybody can bring that miracle, if anybody can do it, you can. And so we're going to do whatever it takes to bring it. So they bring this man, and they, they get to the house, and they see all the crowds, and, the, and I'm sure the immediate thought was, it, it's not going to happen. Sorry, Joe. We tried. Story doesn't stop there, though. Story says that when they realized they couldn't even get near him, they went on top of the house. They went... On top of the house. They went on top 
of the house. Are you hearing that this morning? I don't know what impossible circumstance you're facing. I don't know what, what mountain you have in front of you. But extravagant means exceeding the limits of reason. These men did something extravagant because they knew one touch from the master would set the friend free. Some of us are facing an impossible circumstance. Some of us have cancer. Some of us have deaf ears. Some of us have blind eyes. Some of us have prodigal sons that are so far from us, we don't even think they'll ever come back home. Whatever it is, exceed the realms of reason and continue to push through the crowd and, and the limits and the things the doctor said and news and media and get to the roof because it's when you get to the roof, something Beautiful, something spectacular, something miraculous can and will happen. But we stop at the stairs of the roof saying, that is impossible. Or you take a couple of steps up and people say, the doctor already said. Your kid already said to you. The news has already written it off. Like, like this is what we face. We face persecution, if you will. We're made fun of. We're all sorts of different things. But it says they went to the top of the house and tore away the roof. Tore away the roof. Now, most translations say above Jesus' head. Now, now in, in retrospect, that's right because he's in the house. But we don't, we don't know. They don't know where Jesus is as they climb onto the roof. They just got up there and started digging. They were going to do whatever they could to get in front of Jesus. They were going to do whatever they can to lower that friend in front of Jesus. Now, Bernice lived in Africa, grew up in Africa. Uh, my cousins, uh, James Monahan, Jenny Monahan, James was here several years ago, and, and they have thatched roofs in Africa. So if you have the right tools, it's super easy to break through a thatched roof. We don't know the kind of tools they had, so, but my, my point is it's not an easy thing to necessarily do. So let's picture it in our, our modern United States of America, Redmond, Oregon context. Imagine climbing to the roof, what you would have to do for your miracle. It's not something you just kind of brush out of the way, blow out of the way. It's something you got to work at. There's sweat. There's, there's labor, there's toil, there's tears, there's probably a little, little words that you shouldn't say uttering forth as you make this hole in the roof. There's all sorts of things that are telling you to stop doing it. But they tore through the roof. And when they had broken through, say broken through, they lowered the paralyzed man on a stretcher right down in front. When Jesus saw the extent of their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are now forgiven. Here's the thing. Jesus had to attack the heart before he could do the miracle. Now, there's all sorts of religious aspects and people and, and ideas and thoughts in that room at that moment in time that, that he encountered. But, but if we jump down to the bottom, verse 11, it says, I say to you, man, stand up. Pick up your stretcher and walk home. And immediately the man sprang to his feet in front of everyone and left the house. Say, left the house. He didn't leave the house in a, in a, in a stretcher or, or with the upper half working or the bottom half working. He left completely made whole. See, our, our miracle is often right there. Our miracle is just on the other edge of that hill, on just on the other edge of of whatever it is we're dealing with. But because we allow reason and we try to process it in our minds and try to understand it with our intellect and, and degrees and books, we never fully get there. Because climbing a roof and, and digging a hole and, and lowering them down with ropes seems crazy. Faith is crazy. This whole thing we're doing is crazy. I mean, think about it. There's a man that we serve 
and we follow that went to the cross for you and I so we can be here today. Three days later, rose from like like the whole thing is crazy. <laughs> crazy good. But it's when we are faced with circumstances that have no explanation, that have no understanding, that we can't even wrap our mind around, that we seem to stop short of the miracle that God has for us. We seem to sh stop short of going deeper in Him. We seem to stop short of receiving the more that He has for me, that He has for you. We seem to stop short of, of experiencing His fire and experiencing His, his revival because all of a sudden, we are no longer people passionately pursuing His presence. We're now passionately pursuing Him, but we're trying to work out it with our intellect. Like it doesn't work that way. The men bring their friend. It took four of them to carry the friend. Like, I don't know how far they traveled, but I know there was a lot of set downs and pick back ups. Shake out. Let's rotate sides so I can use the other arm. Like there was a lot of that happening. But they pressed on. They kept walking. There wasn't horse and carriage. Wasn't, you know, a, a, a Porsche that you could slide it in and fly down the road in. It wasn't a truck you could just slide it in. There was no, hey, get that tool company on the phone so we get the crane there set up and you can hoist and you know, make sure the guys at the jacket, like there was none of that. <laughs> Prayer, miracles, revival, all this stuff we're wanting. We got to keep going. We got to keep pressing in. We got to keep wanting to go deeper and deeper and deeper and opening our ears and opening our hearts and opening our minds to say, Holy Spirit, whatever you want from me, I'm here. Speak to me. Say whatever you want. I, I'm ready. I'm going to go where you tell me to go. I'm going to say what you want me to say. I'm just going to do and run hard after you because I got nothing else. The doctor's written me off. My family's written me off. My coworkers have written, written me off. Society's written me off. Media's writing me off. Everybody around me's writing me off. The only thing I have is Jesus. The only thing I have is just to run after him and do the extravagant thing and, and live my life that way because if I don't, I will never see the miracle that he has for me. What are you facing this morning? What circumstances seem too large to overcome? What, what relationship is impossible to see past? What prayers seem ridiculous? Extravagant is a ridiculous way of living. You're going to keep being thrown down, beat up, tossed to the curb, tossed to the side. But it's our response. How do we respond? How do we react? <clears throat> I love sports. And so a lot of my illustrations are sports related. So <clears throat> I was up to 1130 on Friday night. <laughs> and if you know me, in fact, actually, when, when, when Portland beat Oklahoma City and Damien hit that shot my brother made fun of me because I was in bed three hours ago like I, I just right. you know I'm in bed like 8 30 and 9 and it usually starts on the couch and then I wake up because I'm uncomfortable and I'm you know like I, I just can't stay up late Friday night I stayed up late like I couldn't and I read this article on Saturday you know saying you know the one team was down and out somehow they came back the next team was down and out somehow they came back I mean when you're when you're down by four with 30 seconds left and the other team has the ball, like, slim to none, you know. But somehow, they pressed on, they kept on, and the Blazers won. Hallelujah. <laughs> and go for two in a row tonight. My point is, you don't know what happens through the pressing on. You don't know what happens by doing the extravagant thing. You don't know what happens by doing the ridiculous thing. And I know there's people here this morning that are facing impossible challenges. Like you've had it your whole life or the, maybe it's recent and the doctor has said this or, or whatever it might be. But what happens if we posture ourselves this morning in such a way where we say we're just going to go? We're going to press on. We're going to keep on doing it. 
Who knows what might happen? I don't know. I'm not telling you that that's the magic thing. But what I do know is you've got nothing to lose. The pressing in, the prayer, the worshiping, the living your life extravagantly, throwing off any, any reason. I mean, there's reality and then there's God's reality. We have doctors for a reason. I'm not saying you throw them aside, but what I am saying is when it comes to running after the things of God, you listen, but then you push. You listen, and I know what you're saying. I'm not denying what you're saying, but my God will supply all my needs, and he is greater than any circumstance, greater than any sickness, greater than any disease, greater than any mountain, greater than any obstacle, but it's now up to me to throw all that aside and just love him ridiculously. Pursue him ridiculously. Run after him as hard as I can with everything that I got because I have nothing else. My money at some point, it will run out. The medicine will run out. The government will throw in a different medical aid that will not help me because I still have to pay in. But God is the great physician, provider, financier. He's got it covered. He's got it under control. You do not have to worry. You do not have to doubt. You do not have to stress. You do not have to fret because he is in control. What are you going to do when you come face to face with the stairs in your life? You're going to stand there. Or are you going to climb? When I ascend the hill of the Lord, when I'm in his presence, there's his fire, there's his anointing, there's his healing, there's his breakthrough, there's his restoration, there's everything that we need. Let's stand together this morning. We're going to go back into worship. something very bold we're going to do two things first of all we will never ever stop praying for the impossible I don't care what the doctor says we are not a church that you will hear from up here you know what if you have it it's because you did something wrong or you have it um, as a reminder or you know what if it's God's will Whatever. You will never hear any of that come out of this church. What you will hear is God is a healer. I don't care how long you've had it. I don't care what the disability is. I don't care what the circumstance is. I don't care what the situation is. We will pray and we will keep on praying. We will knock. We will seek. We will ask until your breakthrough comes. Because God says in his word, he is the great physician. He is the great provider. Not he sometimes or the every other month or, you know, in the odd year. No. All the time. Read you one more scripture this morning out of Psalm 16. Actually, go to Acts 2. 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 It's taken from Psalm 16, 8 through 11. I continually see the Lord in front of me. He is at my right hand, and I am never shaken. Say, never shaken. No wonder my heart is glad, and my glory celebrates. My mouth is filled with his praises, and I have hope that my body will live. Will live. Hello, will live. I have hope, because you will not leave my soul among the dead. Nor will you allow your sacred one to experience decay. For you have revealed to me the pathways to life. And seeing you face to face fills me with joy. Flip over to Psalm 16. Psalm 16. There's three words and I want you to highlight. Because you're close to me and always available. Say always available. My confidence will never be shaken for I experience your wraparound presence every moment. Say every moment. Always available. Every moment. Always available. Every moment. 
This is the God we serve for your life, for my life, for your circumstance, for my circumstance, for the impossible, for the stairs in your life that you do not know how to conquer. It's time to go deeper this morning to see what might happen. Amen? So here's what we're going to do. If you have an incurable anything in your life, maybe it's a prayer, maybe it's an ailment, maybe it's a, a finance, maybe it's a, a, a whatever, disease, I want you to come to the front and we're going to pray for you. If you're here and you need prayer for, for anything, we want to pray for you as well. But here's what we're going to do while we worship. We're going to worship with total abandon. There's something that happens when we surrender. We are not an observing church. We are an engaging with the presence and fire of God kind of church. We're going to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so if you need prayer for anything in your life, we're going to take, take the next 10, 15 minutes. Worship team's going to worship. And if you have nothing you need prayer for, press in to worship this morning. Press in to all that God has for you this morning because he wants to take you deeper. He wants to take you to a new level. He wants to take you higher. He wants to speak to you, but it takes engagement on our behalf in order to reach that miracle. Are you willing to climb the stairs this morning? Are you willing to go up in the face of laughter, in the face of doubt, in the face of anxiety, in the face of uncertainty, in the face of impossibility? and receive your miracle. Are you? Are you? If you're here for prayer, just line up straight across this room. All the way across. We don't need to be bunched up. we got all sorts of space. Worship team is just going to start worshiping and, and join in. Don't be observers. Press in if you're not up here. Prayer team, leadership team, if you're here, just begin to come and pray. And Minister Penny, you have something? You have something? The mic's right there. Hallelujah. Get hungry this morning. Get thirsty this morning. Get desperate this morning. You know, I just sense the Lord this morning. The Lord uh, gave me these scriptures, and I just wanted to share them with you. And um, I guess it was watching little Richie up here. Because he went after everything that was available this yeah. morning. <laughs> There's joy available. He mm -hmm. came up here, Amen. and he experienced, he went after the joy. Amen. When there's dancing available, oh, I'm going to get some of that, Amen. too. He came up here and danced all over town. Amen. And God says that we are to act like children, Hallelujah. right? We are his children. And I thought how much joy it gave me to watch him. I just started laughing my head off. And I thought, is our Father up in heaven when we do stuff, when we take when we get in there and get after everything that's available, is he just throwing his head back and laughing and having so much joy and watching us step into everything that's available? He laid on, he wrote, danced around, then he laid on the floor and laughed some more. And I thought, oh God, are you laughing up in heaven and just saying, that's my Grinchy? He's taken. He's taking everything that's available. I'll just lay here and soak some fast stuff up. And then he got up and danced around some more and laughed some more. And I thought, oh, we should be like that. Hallelujah. That we would take, that we, he didn't care about what happened Hallelujah. in the car on the way. And maybe he got, had a rough time getting in the car seat or he had Hallelujah. a timeout before he got here. He just left that all back in the car. And he Hallelujah. got in here. He thought, oh, joy's available. I'm going for that. And Amen. he went after it. Amen. And he got it. Amen. He got everything that was available Amen. up there. And I thought of this scripture that the Lord gave me this morning. And it says, from that time on, this is in Matthew 4, Jesus began to proclaim this message with these words. Keep turning away from your sins and come back to God. For he heaven's kingdom realm is now accessible. Hallelujah. We have access. Hallelujah to everything that we need. And how Good. often do Good. we just sit back in our seats and we don't get up and go in and get after what's Come accessible. On. On. And then it says, uh, later he says, the hope of the kingdom realm and healing every kind of sickness and disease among the people. He was preaching the hope of the kingdom realm and the healing of every kind of Hallelujah. sickness. 
His fame spread everywhere, and many people who were in pain and suffering with every kind of illness were brought to Jesus for their healing. Epileptics, paralytics, and those tormented by demonic powers were all set free. Everyone who brought who was brought to Jesus was healed. Hallelujah. So Father, we just want to we just uh, lift on. our hands and we just Come say, on. Father, here's the Thank troubles. You, Jesus. Here's the things that we brought brought in today. We just give them to you. Hallelujah. We say we trust you. Hallelujah. Just say it out loud, Lord. We trust you with Lord, this. Lord, we trust you with this. We just give it to you. We give it to you. We come up there in the spirit and we just give it to you. We want access to everything that's available from your kingdom. Yeah, we just loose everything to you and we bind upon ourselves the things of the kingdom. We just thank you for access right now. Yeah, we ascend to the hill of the Lord and we come up to the place, the seat that you prepared for us next to you. We say we're coming up, God. We're coming up to sit with you where we belong. Hallelujah. No place like you. Prayer team and leadership team, come up. My hands begin to minister. Let's worship together. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Than here in your love. Here in your love. No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, than here in your love, here in your love. Thank you, God, that you're removing the obstacles, you're clearing the blockages.
Whatever it takes, we're going to do whatever it takes to get to you, Jesus. God, we're going to do whatever it takes to get to you, because you are the answer. We push everything away. So I fall down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. years ago now, time has gone by, Penny and I were at a small church here in, in town, and a gal and a guy walked in, and there was, it was a point in the service where they said, turn to someone and pray and prophesy over them, and, and we, it was like our first Sunday there, maybe our second Sunday, we are just visiting, and we started praying and prophesying over this couple, and she is like exploding in tears, I mean, the, whatever God was doing, he was hitting the mark for and we were prophesying and praying about life and abundance and, and generational stuff. And, and come to find out that she is a uh, state representative uh, out of Washington. And she was pregnant. And she was pregnant with a baby that has Potter's disease, which is 100% terminal. That means the baby is not getting the fluid that it needs to make kidneys and when, without kidneys, you will not develop lungs. And it is 100% fatal, and no one has ever survived. And so she shared that afterwards, what, what was going on. And, and so we prayed into that. And, and she had prayer from a lot of churches, right? It wasn't just us, but it was a lot of churches, and it was really God. And the baby uh, was born, and it cried. So you can't cry unless you have lungs, right? And this was written up, literally, I still have the articles. It was written up in ABC News. It was written up on CNN. It was written up in People Magazine. And it was written up in the Washington Post declaring 
that this is a miracle baby and no one has ever survived this before ever. And the baby now has, the dad actually gave the baby a kidney, so the baby now has kidneys. I mean, it was like a huge, huge miracle. But you know, people say, oh, if it was really a miracle, it would be written up. It was written up, yeah. right? And there's, there's testimony in there from Nancy Pelosi, right? About the miracle. CNN is declaring the miracle. These, this is a real deal. I mean, I could share the articles with you. But don't give up, yeah. right? Yeah. But Amen. God. Amen. But God. God had another plan for this baby and this Hallelujah. miracle. Hallelujah. Let's stand together this morning. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus.